business-oriented, and the community and the people that I've met and I work with on a daily basis in Argentina just you know, makes it such an enjoyable, an enjoyable event for me. I want to thank Diego and Rodolfo and everybody involved in putting these things together. Uh, I myself put on conferences and put on uh, a lot of events, and it's just fantastic to be here. So what I'm going to talk about today is the case for a blockchain interface. Right now in the space, and for a long time, there's many things that are just a mess. There's a lot of jealousy between projects. There's a lot of different ideologies. And what I learned quite a long time ago, actually in the early 2000s from a friend of mine, was that the world is not black and white. Growing up, I was raised in a, in a family with a lot of right and wrong, a lot of this is the right way to do things, this is the wrong way to do things. And I remember a friend of mine telling me back in, two, in the early 2000s that you look, at, you look at things, tell me that I look at things in a very black and white fashion. And since then, I, I didn't really understand what it meant, but now I really do. And since 2012, being in the blockchain space, it's one thing I think I've brought to the table is really the thinking that things are not black and white, that things have a lot of color to them. And to see things in that light is what's led to a lot of issues in our space, whether it be people thinking, you know, when we started Ethereum back in 2013, that, oh my God, it's not Bitcoin. You know, what are you, what are you doing? And before, before Ethereum, everything was Bitcoin to me. And then with the launch of Ethereum, it's like there's more out there. There's more other options and choice that people have. And I think it's one of the things that I really tried to bring to this space is not looking at things in the, the lens of black and white. So there's a number of issues that plague the space. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. And kind of bring it together with three different concepts of how we fix the issues that we're seeing and witnessing in this space. Here's an example of one coin and a very similar uh, chart that we see for a number of different tokens in the space, a number of different coins that really don't bring much value. Definitely one problem in the space is the amount of worthless projects that don't really bring much value, but people still have choice, people have the options to use them. So this on the left is really where we started off with the, the interface for, for blockchain, it's a standard Bitcoin wallet. And I like to look at things in the perspective of how would my dad look at this technology? And it's such an interesting space to navigate. And if you don't have the proper tools, the proper designs, and the proper interfaces, how would someone like my father, who is the, the type of people we're trying to bring into this space, the masses is how I represent things. So when I think about the masses and what we need to do to bring people into the space, I think of how would someone like my dad be able to navigate the waters that we have. And the things that I design and the things that I built with my team is creating something that my dad would find useful for these technologies. And if we can get to someone like him, we have a very good chance and very good opportunity to get to the general masses. So it's in the media that have just turned out to be disasters and turned to be things that are causing harm in our space. We are the disruptors and the problem solvers. I worked for a number of clients in the financial institution. I did a part-time gig with the Toronto Stock Exchange as chief digital officer to really get an insight to see how the systems work. And what I realized is that the problems that are being solved in our space are not being done by the large organizations. I've worked for companies like Deloitte, I've worked for different banks, doing consulting work for them on technology, and really realize that it's not them that are, causing, that are solving the problems out there. It's really the small communities, the, the disruptors, the people get into the space very early on. The, the kids, the people that don't care so much about money, but they really want to change the world. And that's why I see a lot of companies in the, sp in, in the business space that are struggling to find the appropriate people that they need to get this technology into their system, and I really see them spinning their wheels. And it's a thing that I've, that's become very prevalent with the clients that I've worked for. It's very hard to find the talent and find the people that are needed in order to create the breakthroughs and to solve the problems that we have. If we don't get this to the masses, there's a very good chance that we're going to end up having ourselves disrupted. It's, it's key that we create the systems, the processes, the designs in order to take this technology to the next level. And this is what I'm making the case for, for a common blockchain interface, which will enable the masses to understand this technology. People like my dad to come and say, okay, I, I get it now, and I understand why I'm doing this, and here's the tools that I can, get, I can use in order to understand this technology. So 
I want to base what I'm going to talk about today on three different areas, that being of design, unity, and education. There are three elements in the projects that I work on that I try to bring together with the ultimate goal of taking this technology that we're passionate about to the masses. So I want to go through the history of the interface in terms of technology. It started off with, with systems, computers, where you know, no visual elements, no displays, no real interaction or very limited interaction between humans and between the computers. The initial first interactions with punch card systems with computers that were used to, to work with the designs that they had back then. And as things progressed, we started seeing things like visual elements. We started seeing GUIs, graphical user interfaces, that, in, that people could start interacting with the technology. Here's the first examples of the first browsers for the internet. So like the GUI did for the personal computer and brought it to life for the masses, the web browser really brought together the visual elements of the internet that we're also used to using now. And people can look at it and say, okay, I understand. This is now a gateway. It's an interface for the internet. So I can now see the information and the resources that I need. And this wasn't available until the first browsers existed. This was in 2012, coming off the heels of Satoshi Dice, uh, the first provably fair gaming system built around Bitcoin. Satoshi Dice worked by sending from a wallet to an address, and if you were to win in the gambling site, you would actually get money sent back to you through your wallet. But it had no graphical user interface. And in the early days when I first got into Bitcoin, 2012, me and my partner were looking at and saying, okay, what can we do to get into the space, create some business ideas. And the first thing that we capital, like a lot of people do in the space, is the gambling space was really hot in 2012, and that's what we decided to go into. So we created a gamified version, visual experience, leaderboards, uh, contests, and we ended up creating a, a really cool game that we sold a couple months later, and that was my first exit in the Bitcoin space. And interesting story is, is the sale that I did with that actually funded quite a bit of the Ethereum project for the first many months that we were working towards uh, the crowd sale. So it was how do you create a visual experience around this technology? And what was cool about Satoshi Circle was that you've got a personal deposit address up there, you're instantly sending to a QR code and you start playing right away. And you've got a secret URL system at the top there which acts as your account, and that's what you bookmark to get back to your account. So I'm also very keen on removing friction points from software, create the, removing the friction areas. I hate usernames and passwords. All the software that we create now in the wallet space at JAX doesn't have usernames or passwords. There are optional security levels that you can add further on. But it's about getting people into what you're trying to show them and doing it with the least amount of friction as possible. This is an example of the first one, the first HTML5 wallets that we created. It's called Rush Wallet. And this is available on multiple different platforms. Again, a simple user experience. You have a private URL that enables you to get back to your account. You can deposit instantly, and there you have a wallet that you can create many, many, many of them without needing uh, to download anything. You can use it on multiple different devices, and this is something that we've had hundreds of thousands of users uh, use over the last few years. And we actually modeled ethereumwallet.com, which was the first real Ethereum wallet based on, on Rush Wallet. This was our first product, and this is actually the product that brought Bitcoin into the browser. This was called CryptoKit. The cool thing about CryptoKit was it was a Chrome extension that enabled you to stay on the page that you were shopping on without having to copy addresses or move back and forth between tabs. It would automatically pick up the amount, the code, and offer one-click payments so that you wouldn't need to get off the page that you're working in. Another example of using an interface to interact with web browsers so that you can send your payments very quickly and easily without friction. Another the point of this was to create a one-stop dashboard, almost like a Bloomberg terminal, for everything you might need in the blockchain space. You've got your headline news, you've got your prices at the bottom, video, prices at the top, Twitter feeds, and charts. Something in one place, that interface, that you have everything you need in, in one area. So there's a lot of hype in our space, there's a lot of projects, there's a lot of things that just don't have any merit. It happens with any technology that's emerging is people try to get on board and a lot of them do it for the wrong reasons. So it's about getting through that and how do we get to the people, get to the masses, to really show them the technology that we're really passionate about. So, unity. We come, as I said before, the world is not black and white. There's many different projects. There's a lot of jealousy between the different projects. 
And it's something that really doesn't help out the entire community as a whole. I realized again when we started Ethereum that people weren't happy in the Bitcoin space. And then with Ethereum, even the community that's revolving around that seems very tight to the whole Ethereum project. Now, I'm no longer involved with 